Hello, this is Rick from Mathlex, and today we'll be solving a big boy problem. Number 10 from Amy 1 of 2020. Now compared to most of the other Amy problems, this problem doesn't look that scary. Whereas other Amy problems typically have like a paragraph worth of writing and like 50 different factors to take account, this entire Amy problem consists of like four lines and a question. And that's it's for this reason on the test when I was taking Amy, I decided to attempt this problem. Unfortunately for me, it's still in Amy number 10, and it wasn't as easy as it looked. And even though I toiled through it, I still somehow managed to solve it. Now looking back, this problem wasn't that hard, and I shouldn't have spent so much time on it. So that's why I'll be going over it today. Let m and n be positive integers satisfying the conditions gcd of m plus n and 210 equals 1 m to the power of n is a multiple of n to the power of n, and m is not a multiple of n. Find the least positive value of n plus n. So, this problem gives us three clues. It gives us the GCD of m plus n and 210 to be 1. It gives us that m to the power of n is a multiple of n to the power of n, and m is not a multiple of n. So let's look at these clues independently and see what we can break out from there. So this first clue, GCD of m plus n and 210 is equal to 1. What does this mean? That means m plus n and 210 are relatively prime with one another. And what does that mean? I just took one term and made it another term. Well, that means they share no other common factors other than 1. So what does that mean for m plus n? Well, if we take the prime factorization of 210, we get that it's equal to 2 times 3 times 5 times 7. So since m plus n and 210 share no other common factor other than 1, that means m plus n cannot have 2 as a factor, cannot have 3 as a factor, cannot have 5 as a factor, cannot have 7 as a factor. So in order to minimize it, we have to get that m plus n has to have 11 as a factor in order to minimize this value. Because 11 is the next smallest prime number after this. So we pretty much break it down the first clue. In order to minimize m plus n, it needs to be divisible by 11. Then as for the next two clues. Well, it tells us a statement in the second point, but the statement really is dependent on the third statement. So we have to group these two together. M to the M is a multiple of N to the N, and M is not a multiple of N. Now, it was at this moment in the test when I realized, what is it talking about? Because when we typically think of numbers like this, like when we typically think of M to the M to be a multiple of N to the N, well, it's probably going to be like 9 to the 9 is a multiple of 3 to the 3. But here it tells us that's not possible. Because m it cannot be a multiple of n. So m being, m being 9 and n equal 3, this case won't work. So then this is where I started to bash out a couple numbers. So let's do something, something with 2, because 2 is the smallest prime number. Well, if n is any value of 2, then if n is 2, then m can be any even number. And then this, the second statement will hold true, but the, but the third statement will not hold true. Because all even numbers are a multiple of 2. And we want m not to be a multiple. So we can't do n is equal to 2. Now what if n was equal to 4? Well then, if we get something like n is equal to 4 and m is equal to 10, then we see that 10 to the 10 is divisible by 4 to the 4. And how do we figure this out? Well, well, what is 4 to the 4? 4 to the 4 is merely 2 squared to the 4th power, which is 2 to the 8. And then 10 to the 10 is made out of 10 2s and 10 5s. So that means if we multiply 4 to the 4 by 2 to the 2, 
and then multiply that by 5 to the 10. We're going to get 10 to the 10. So then what we see here is the case. We took a basic number and we kind of just squared it. And we saw that we made a number that was basically made of only one prime factor. In this case, 4 to the 4 was only made out of 2s. And then we compared it to a number that would normally not be divisible by. But because it was raised to such a high exponent, it made up for the one prime factor that we wanted. As well as that, it had some other prime factor that didn't really matter in this case. So let's do the same thing, a similar idea with that, except with our smallest factor in this case, 11. So if we put 11 down as a value of n, then that obviously won't work because in order for m to the m be a multiple of n to the n, m to the m has to have 11s in it. But if m has an 11 in it, then it's automatically in a, a multiple of 11, which in this case is n. And we don't want that to happen. We don't want m to be a multiple of n. So instead of 11, let's put an 11 squared as n. Well then, that means that n is equal to 121. So that means that m has to be multiple of 121 to the power of 121. Let's convert this back down to 11 so we can understand how, how many 11s we need in this. 121 is 11 squared. So then by, just by multiplying 11, multiplying 2 by 121, we get 242. Because that's how exponents work. We multiply when they're in parentheses of each other. We get m to the m has to contain at least 242 11s. So that must mean in order for m not to be a multiple of n, m can only contain 111. But then m to the m has to contain over 242 11s. So in the end, it's this upper exponent that we need to think about. Because in m itself, there's only going to be one, 11. But whatever number m, whatever number m is, there's going to be m times one, 11s. So that must mean that m must be greater than 242. It must be a multiple of 11 greater than 242. But it cannot be a multiple of 121. So let's write all this information down. Now that we have all the rules for the value of m we're going to search for, let's make some space and start searching for ourselves by using some numbers. The next multiple of 11 after 242 is 253. And then if we add that to our value of n, which I'm going to write right now because I forgot to write before, well, Instead of calculating out this the normal way, I'm going to hold 11 common and then factor it out. So here we have 11 times 23 is equal to 253. And 11 times 11 is equal to 121. So then in the end, we get 11 times 34. Well, this is a problem because when we add these two up, we're going to get 11 times 34 as the sum. But then, if it's 11 times 34, the GCD of these two numbers would be 2. And as we've proven, the GCD would be, the GCD has to be 1. So, when m is equal to 253, this case doesn't work. The next multiple of 11 after 253 is 264. So, once again, when we add it to 121, we hold 11 common, we get 11 times 24 to get 264, and then 11 times 11 to get 121. So, in total, we get our sum to be 11 times 35. Once again, this is a problem once again, because then the GCD of m plus n and 210 would be 35. Because then it would also be a multiple of 5 and 7. This doesn't work, because we want it to be 1. So, we keep on doing that. 275 next, plus 121. We hold 11 common, get 25, 
plus 11. This time we get 11 times 36, which once again has too many factors. 36 has factors in 2 and 3. It doesn't work because then the GCD would be greater, be 6. So we try once again. 286, because that's the next multiple 11 after 275, plus 121. This time, we hold 11 common once again. 11 times 26 plus 11. And we get it's equal to 11 times 37. We need to worry about. And if we multiply this and we take the GCD of this, of this m plus m and 210, we're going to get 1 because this number has none of the factors that 210 has. It has 11 and 37. 210 has 2, 3, 5, and 7. So then we see that 286 is our multiple 11 that we we're searching for for m. And then in order to minimize it, we took our value of n to be 121. So we get our m to be 286 and n to be 121. Adding it up, we get 286 plus 121. We get 407 as our solution. And 407 to be the least possible value of m plus n. Now this Amy problem didn't really require too many advanced concepts, considering that lots of Amy problems have you used trig and power of point and like lots of complicated and unknown theorems like that. This one, we just need to use ideas like GCD and prime factorization. But it really tests our intuition and how we're able to formulate thoughts on the fly. What's really killer about this problem to most unexperienced mathletes is the second and third point. Because just looking at this, we have no idea where to approach it. You could be like me and think, huh, that, that just doesn't seem right. But the only way to overcome that is by start, trial, try, start trying solutions. Because in a math test, as I've said before in previous videos, we don't, we're, not, we're not expected to know everything that's going to be on the test. We're not supposed to know how to attack everything that's on the test, which is why we should be able to formulate solutions on the fly. We've got to start trialing and testing. Because testing is always the first step to solving a problem. After our test, then we can make assumptions of where to go and how to take further steps to eventually solve the problem.